My friend Serge has bought a painting. It's a canvas about five foot by four, white. The background's white, and if you screw up your eyes, you can make out some fine white diagonal lines. Serge is one of my oldest friends. He's done very well for himself. He's a dermatologist, and he's keen on art. And Monday, I went to see the painting. Serge actually got a hold of it on the Saturday, but he'd been lusting after it for several months, this white painting with white lines. Expensive? 200,000. 200,000? Huntington would take it off my hands for 220. Who's that? Huntington? Never heard of him. The Huntington Gallery? The Huntington Gallery would take it off your hands for 220? Oh, no, not the gallery. Huntington. Huntington himself for his own collection. Then why didn't Huntington buy it? It's important for them to sell to private clients. That's how the market circulates. Mm hmm. Well? You're not looking at it from the right angle. Can you see the lines? What's the name of the... Painter. Andrios. Well known? Very. <laughs> Very. Serge, you haven't paid 200,000 francs for this painting. <laughs> Don't understand. That's what it costs. It's an Antrios. You haven't bought this painting for 200,000 francs. I might have known you'd miss the point. You paid 200,000 francs for this shit? My friend Mark's an intelligent enough fellow. I value our relationship. He's got a good job. He's an aeronautical engineer. But he's one of these new style intellectuals who's not only an enemy of modernism, but seems to take some sort of incomprehensible pride in running it down. In recent years, these nostalgia merchants have become quite breathtakingly arrogant. What do you mean, this shit? Serge, where's your sense of humor? Why aren't you laughing? It's fantastic you buying this painting. <laughs> I don't care how fantastic you think it is. I don't mind if you laugh, but I would like to know what you mean by this shit. You got ripped off. No, I didn't. By whose standards is it shit? If you're gonna call something shit, you've gotta have some criterion to judge it by. Who are you talking to? Who do you think you're talking to? Hello? You have no interest whatsoever in modern painting. You never have. This is a field about which you know absolutely nothing. So how can you assert that any given object which conforms to laws that you don't understand is shit? Because it is. It's shit. I'm sorry. He doesn't like the painting. Fine. But there was no warmth in the way he reacted. No attempt. No warmth when he dismissed it out of hand. Just that vile, pretentious laugh. A real know-all laugh. I hated that laugh. It's a complete mystery to me, Serge, buying this painting. It's unsettled me. It's filled me with some indefinable unease. When I left this place, I had to take three capsules of Gelsemium 9X, which Paula recommended. Gelsemium or Ignatia, she said. Gelsemium or Ignatia, which do you prefer? I mean, how the hell should I know? Because I can't begin to understand how Serge, my friend, could have bought that painting. 200,000 francs. He's comfortably off, but he's hardly rolling in money. It's comfortable. No more just comfortable, and he spends 200 grand on a white painting. As far as I'm concerned, it's not white. When I say as far as I'm concerned, I mean objectively. Objectively speaking, it's not white. 
It's got a white background with a whole range of grays. There's even some red in it. You could say that it's very pale. I wouldn't like it if it was white. Mark thinks it's white. That's his limit. Mark thinks it's white because he's got hung up on the idea that it's white. Mark can think what he likes. What do I care? Why do I have to be so categorical? What possible difference can it make to me if Serge lets himself get taken in by modern art? I mean, it is a serious matter. But I could have found some other way to put it to him. I could have taken a less aggressive tone, even if it does make me physically ill that he has bought a white painting. All the same. I ought to avoid attacking him about it. I ought to be nice to him from now on. I'm on my best behavior. Look. It's just a picture. There's no need to get bogged down with it. Life's too short. You know, I've been thinking. I was thinking and I've changed my mind. I was thinking, isn't there deep down something really poetic about what you've done? Isn't surrendering to this incoherent urge to buy, in fact, an authentically poetic impulse? You're very conciliatory. Unrecognizable. Why this bland, submissive tone of voice? It doesn't suit you at all. I'm too thin-skinned, too highly strung. I overreact. You could say I lack judgment. The fact of the matter is, you've quite simply lost your sense of humor. Probably. How's Paula? All right. Where are you going to put it? Haven't decided. There? Maybe there. You're too ostentatious. Are you going to have it framed? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Why not? It's not supposed to be framed. Is that right? It's already in its setting. The artist doesn't want it framed. It's not to be interrupted. Look. You see? What is it, elastoplast? No, some sort of a craft paper made up by the artist. It's funny the way you say the artist. What else am I supposed to say? You say the artist when you could say the painter, whatever his name is, Antria. So? But you say the artist as if he's some unattainable being. The artist. Some sort of god. Well, to me, he is a god. You don't think I have forked out a fortune for some mere mortal. I see. I went to the Pompidou on Monday. You know how many antrioses they have at the Pompidou? Three. Three antrioses at the Pompidou. Amazing. And mine's as good as any of them. Why are you so jumpy? If not better. I'm not jumpy. Why are you so touchy? I'm not touchy. Look, Mark, you've told me what you think. Fine. You're getting upset. I am not getting upset. I'm exhausted. Mark. See, if you're touchy about it, it means you're getting too caught up in other people's opinions. Mark, I am exhausted. Look, this whole thing is completely pointless. I can't imagine you genuinely loving this painting. Why would I buy it if I didn't love it? That's never the question. It never crossed your mind for a second, no matter how improbable it might seem, that I might truly love it and that your vicious, inflexible opinions and your disgusting assumption of complicity might be hurtful to me. No. When you asked me what I thought of Paula. 
a girl who once spent an entire dinner party maintaining that Elher Danlos' syndrome could be cured homeopathically. Did I say that I found her to be ugly, repellent, and charmless? I could have. Is that what you think of Paula? What's your theory? Answer me. You see the effects you can have? Do you think what you just said about Paula? Worse, actually. Worse, Serge. Worse than repellent. Will you explain how someone can be worse than repellent? Aha! I see that when it's something that concerns you personally, words can bite a little deeper. Serge, will you explain how someone can be worse than repellent? No need to take that frosty tone. L let me try and answer you. Perhaps... Perhaps it's the way that she waves away cigarette smoke. The way she waves away cigarette smoke? Yeah. The way that she waves away cigarette smoke. What you think of as a harmless gesture, what you, you might call a gesture without significance, is in fact the opposite. And the way that she waves away cigarette smoke actually sits right at the very heart of her repellentness. You are speaking to me of Paula, the woman who shares my life in these intolerable terms and you're, because you disapprove of her method of waving away cigarette smoke? That's right. Her method of waving away cigarette smoke condemns her out of hand. Search. Before I completely lose my control, you'd better explain yourself. This is serious what you're doing. A normal woman would say, excuse me, I'm sorry, but the smoke bothers me a little. Could you move your ashtray? But no, not her. She doesn't deign to speak. She describes her contempt in the air with this calculated gesture, this wearily malicious, this, this gesture, which she believes to be imperceptible, the implication of which is to say, go on, smoke, smoke. It's pathetic, but what's the point of calling attention to it? Which makes you wonder if it's you or your cigarette that's getting up her nose. Her method of waving away cigarette smoke reveals a cold, calculating, and narrow-minded nature, just what you're in the process of acquiring yourself. It's a shame, Mark. It's a real shame you've taken up with such a life-defying woman. Take back everything you just said, Serge. No. Take back what you've just said. Serge, for the last time, I demand you take back what you've just said. <laughs> 